The Four Nights of the Apocalypse, Chapter 151, This Is Not a Tragedy. And after combining forces to attack Worlden, King, and Nations, Father and Son are exhausted, but they have finally managed to bring down the White Knight once and for all. Who ended up in that state? And at the foot of the tower, the great family was reunited, all happy and 100% healed. Yes, thanks to Nations and his medicine, even the pain had completely disappeared, and the wounds had practically healed. And Diane praises Nations, saying he's a great doctor. But the herbalist, embarrassed, replies that he's not. And Xana agrees, because the little giant still complains of a lot of pain that is spreading throughout her body. So does Sixtus, who asks Nations if there's anything he can do about it. But the herbalist tells him that they both had very serious injuries, so he prioritized treating the wounds rather than soothing the pain. And he was only able to do all this thanks to a special remedy called Percival, which has the ability to destroy defective injuries and regenerate missing body tissue. Nations goes on to say that the pain they are feeling now is bearable, and that it is also proof that they are alive, so he asks them both to be patient. On the other hand, Myrtle was very grateful to Nations, as he no longer had his coughing fits. And Nations was very happy about this, even though for the time being it wasn't permanent, but temporary. And hearing this, Tyra promises that everyone will help him harvest Mullen later. But while he was distracted, Nations was surprised by someone pulling him by the arm. It was King, who was worried about his state of health. The King of the Fairies asks him to rest as soon as he can, as he has just awakened and is still in control of the true spirit spear, and this must have undoubtedly consumed a considerable amount of his magic. And Nations looked at King with a strange look, then asked, I've awakened. But Diane and Tyra knew perfectly well what that moment was all about. But it doesn't take long for Nations to catch on, because Sixtus is very direct when he says, but what a shame. I assumed you'd be next after Dad. But in the end, you were chosen by the sacred tree as the fourth fairy king. So Nations, you're our big brother. But Nations' answer is surprising, because the herbalist says, no, you're wrong, because your older brother is Myrtle. But on hearing this from Nations, Myrtle reacts by saying that he doesn't need to worry about him. But the herbalist quickly replies that he isn't, and that there is no proof that he is their son. But Myrtle points out the resemblance they have, that his face has all the features of his mother and father. But Nations disagrees, saying that the mere resemblance could just be a coincidence of chance, or something similar. And that his family still is and always will be Ordo and Dolores. And no doubt that wasn't the answer his brothers, mother, and father wanted to hear. However, at that moment, Sixtus and King were able to hear the voice of Nations' heart. I'm really glad you're all okay, Dad, Mom, my brothers. And after hearing that, Sixtus smiles while King delivers that Nations is a terrible liar. This causes widespread confusion, with Tyra wanting to understand what his father meant and Diane asking King not to keep any secrets. Sin tries to defend himself by saying that he's not hiding anything from them. However, the subject soon changes, with Myrtle asking her father if he's going to return to his original form. And the Fairy King believes that it's not something that time will solve, although it only happened because he let his guard down, and Kill began sacrificing himself to cast a curse on him. However, Diane reminds him that he can simply drink the ancestral elixir to break the curse. But King soon throws a bucket of water on this possibility, as he tells her that the elixir was unfortunately destroyed along with the sorceress. So he has no idea what they should do. Nations, however, suggests that he consult Mr. Hendrickson. And King doesn't seem to like the idea very much, so he starts with Hendrickson, do you know him? King asks. Nations replied that he did, saying that he was an incredible doctor and very famous in Leoness. Then the herbalist asks King not to worry, because he will take care of it by going to Leoness. However, just as Nations finishes saying this, something unexpected happens. The herbalist is hit by a magical attack that simply passes through his body. And this atrocity happened right in front of the bewildered eyes of his family. And as if that wasn't enough, Nations is pierced again, one, two, three, four times. The cry of despair calling his name echoes through the fairyland. And even though he was badly wounded, Nations still tried to stand up in front of the enemy, the person who had attacked him, the White Knight. 
who was only too happy to take revenge. <laughs> However, she ended up arousing Diane's fury, the fury of a mother who advances offensively against the sorceress. However, Worldon fires several shots at Diane, King, Myrtle, and Tyra, Belt, Zillion, and Fail, Xana, and Sixtus. None of them escaped the overwhelming power of the White Knight. Who admits, I almost died a few minutes ago, but I still had one last resort, and I also wanted to test how potent the elixir is, and this moment turned out to be perfect, the only bad thing is that now there's only one dose left. Looking at Nasians, she is surprised that he is alive, even though she has shot him several times, a little thankful that he has caused her so much trouble. However, as she points her finger at Nasians, she says that she has no choice, because she has to finish her last job. And without the strength to react, Nasians wondered, is my heart stopping beating? Am I going to die? If I die, will I be able to find you? I've tried to wake you up in many ways, but I've never been able to find a clue. And now I'm going to fall without being able to become a great herbalist and overthrow the Eternal Kingdom. Please forgive me. But someone replies, no, I don't forgive you. Do you know why I left? I just didn't want to hurt you, our companions and everyone else, that's all. Yet you're going to die here? That would be unforgivable. But that's okay. I'm only joking, because it's really me who should be asking you for forgiveness. For this only happened because of my selfish choice to leave behind all of you who never stopped believing in me. But if you can't forgive me, then just let me fight by your side again. And without understanding what was going on, Worlden asks, Wait, where did you come from? And who are you? To protect Nasians and all those he loves, Percival finally returns. The Death Knight will not allow death to reach any of his friends. Continued in the next chapter, entitled, Resurrection.